hundreds of them. In fact, if you're not, any Australians in the audience? Anybody been to Australia? Have you seen any of these? They're everywhere. They're like pigeons. People take no notice of them. And if you're an Australian out here, you'd be kind of thinking, why have you got these galahs? Because, and can you see how a little bit crazy they are when they fly? <laughs> if you are a little bit crazy in Australia, uh, you get called a crazy galah. Uh, because uh, these birds are renowned for their crazy behaviour. Now they are members of the parrot family and they eat uh, crops. So they've learned to live alongside man because they will eat seeds and uh, wheat, corn, maize, all that kind of stuff. And they live in large flocks and if a flock of these fly into your field if you're a farmer, then these are your worst nightmare. They can ruin your crop in an afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the original serial killers. <laughs> You laugh, didn't you? I don't think you would, but you did. Um, so they are really uh, quite a, uh, a, a pest. But they're quite beautiful to see. Um, we'll see if we can get them to do a bit more flying, because I'd like you to see how wonderful they are in the air. And they stay with their partner in the air. Can you see how they sort of stay side by side? And this kind of increases the bond between the two birds and makes them fall in love with each other. These are just two friends. These are girls. But um, in the wild, of course, this would be a pair. And they may stay together for their whole life. Now, they are cockatoos, and that means they've got a crest on the top of their head, which they can lift up when they get excited. All right? And uh, sometimes as we walk along the front row, they'll lift their crest up when they see certain people in the audience that they like. So far, no, nobody, so I'm sorry. <laughs> now, many people think parrots make good pets. Um, they are a challenging pet to keep, is what I would say. Uh, because they live a long time, they bond with one other individual, usually, so having one in a family situation is not a brilliant thing to do. Hello, young man. So, um, they aren't really birds of prey, so we will have to say uh, thank you very much to them and say goodbye. So, shall we say goodbye to Kenny and Floss, our two guards, ladies and gentlemen. There we are. All right. So now it's time to show you birds of prey, and I'll just remind you once again, please can you stay seated now once we start flying the birds. We're going to fly them low over your heads. And uh, the first bird today you will probably find is going to be very, very low, all right? So uh, please do stay in your seats and do duck your heads as well. Uh, this particular bird's going to be wearing an aerial on her leg, and uh, that means that it dangles down a little bit, so you can duck to avoid it. Her name's Goldie. And Goldie is a hawk. This kind of hawk is found in the United States. She is called a Harris hawk. And if I was to ask you to uh, draw a bird of prey, this is typically what a bird of prey looks like. It's got a, a, a hooked beak, uh, it's got long toenails called talons, and this one looks just like a typical bird of prey. She's really quite nice. She's going to give a few haircuts as she comes in. Look. Goldie, Goldie the hawk. She's actually nearly 20 years old, which is quite an old lady. If she was a human, she'd be in her 70s. So she's quite old. And uh, you can see that she's flying in, a, in amongst you and, and flying to, to us here today. And you can see that Dolly over there and myself, uh, we're wearing leather gloves, okay? And this is due to the fact that these birds do have uh, long toenails uh, called talons, and they, um, they're quite sharp, and accidentally uh, she may scratch us with those talons, so we wear the gloves just to keep ourselves nice and safe, stop us leaking blood all over children and things like that. <laughs> Uh, but she's actually a really, really nice bird. It's just accidental scratches that we might get from the talons. Now, for her, dinner would be a rabbit. Or a rat, or a hamster, or a gerbil, or anything small and furry. She mostly catches her prey on the ground. All right, Catching in the air is very difficult. If she can do this, this would be brilliant. Whoa, well done! Yeah, that was clever. That's a 50-50, that is, folks, because that's not her thing. Her thing is catching prey on the ground. Like that. Um, now
Now, I want to show you just something here quickly. If, if I put her up on this, uh, on, on here, uh, do you think I could get her to sort of land on this rope? Let's see what happens. Ooh. Now, you see how her tail helps her to balance, but she's not comfortable on there, and she will want to kind of get off of there real quick. Whoa! And remember that, because I'm going to show you another bird in a minute that looks the same, but is much more comfortable on this rope. All right? So she hunts her prey on the ground. And Harris hawks are the only uh, birds of prey that really hunt as a pack, all right? Or a pride of lions or a pack of wolves. These hawks hunt together. And they communicate with each other in order to hunt correctly. And they do it by making little noises. So um, she makes little squeaks. If you, can you, I don't know if you can, can you hear her talking to me? Yeah, squeaky, grunty. But... That's all very well for up close, but if, if another one of her family is a long way away, they communicate by shaking their tail feathers. Can you see how white those tail feather tips are? When she moves to a new location, she'll shake her tail feather. So this time, instead of landing to the glove, we're going to get her to just land up here. Goldie, just show her you've got nothing in your hand unless you have got something in your hand. That's it. Up here, Goldie. That's it. Come on. Can you pop her on the, on the wall? That's it, okay, that's good. Now watch her tail. She's just moved, and there. Now as these hawks spread around, they set up ambushes, and they know where everybody is, because every time somebody moves, they can see where the, w the wiggles are. And then there'll be hawks on the ground that will drive prey out into the open, like a rabbit or a, a rat, and then the, the birds up high just drop down and catch their prey like that. She's pretty wonderful, this Goldie, and uh, she is um, quite good for an old lady, eating grass now. She's become a vegetarian uh, hawk. <laughs> um, but we're not going to ask her to do too much more because she's got a long day ahead, so we're going to say thank you very much to you, Goldie. Would you like to put yourself back up there? Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Goldie, our Harris's hawk. Right, now the next bird is going to confuse you. You'll have to listen very carefully because that was a Harris's hawk. The next bird is a Harrier hawk. It's not the same bird. This is a very different bird and in fact is very unusual and in fact is the only one of its kind in a display in this country and they're very, very few and far between in Europe as well. That's because they're difficult to train. Madam, you need to take a seat. You're in the flight path of the next bird. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's see if we can introduce you to PJ. PJ is our African Harrier Hawk. And here she is. Now she is lightweight. She's got broad wings and she's one of the most graceful flying birds of prey. She's slow, she's light, she's beautiful in the air. Really quite graceful. Again, we're going to fly right over that spot, stay exactly where you are. We've got a, a lot of wrigglers in that corner. Okay, take a seat now for me then. Thanks very much. So this is, um, we'll just do that again. And you can see just how lightweight and how gentle she flies. Now this is not a speedy bird. The hawk used speed and agility to catch her prey. But this is a bird of prey that's very slow, very deliberate. So how is she going to catch her prey? Well, she's weird. Because this is a bird of prey that eats fruit. And you don't have to be very fast to catch a piece of fruit. All you have to do is to be able to get on a branch and walk along it. And some of the branches are wobbly and that's why I put the rope up because I wanted to show you just how good this really unusual bird of prey is at walking along a wobbly branch. All right. So you have to pretend that this is a, this is a, a wobbly branch. And I'll put some food in the middle and we'll see if PJ can actually sort of make her way along here. And she's actually able to walk along this wobbly rope and hold her wings out a bit like a tightrope walker does. See that? No other bird of prey can do this. Now again, this is another very old bird. She's around 22 years old. 
She was bred at London Zoo. She's been flying here every day since way back then. And um, she's still the most nervous bird that we work with, as you can see. She's very nervous looking. And this is one of the reasons why um, these birds are not seen in bird of prey displays, because they are extremely highly strung. Anything can freak them out, that's unusual. And um, this is why we are exceptionally proud of her here at this zoo, flying for us in these displays. Thanks to the airplane. Look at this. This is a weaver bird's nest. This is the kind of nest that a, <laughs> this is the kind of nest that a, a bird like a, a weaver bird would, would build out there in the wild. And this weaver bird's nest has got an entrance under here and it's safe from almost every predator. It's about the size of a sparrow, a weaver bird, and it weaves this fantastic nest and African harrier hawks are predators of weaver birds. They hang under the nest, they're the only predator that can do this. And they've got long legs and they look inside the nest and then stick their leg in. And if they can grab an egg or a baby bird, that gets them dinner. And this is a bird that's been bred at London Zoo, that's living in Norfolk, that's behaving as naturally as possible. The other cool thing is she can see food that other birds can't see. The harrier hawk um, is going to find food in these rocks that we hid earlier. Now, the hawk that you saw first of all would have no inclination to look for food where it can't see it. It's triggered by eyesight, but this one is triggered by its brain. And out there in the wild, in Africa, she will look in the cracks in rocks for lizards and beetles. And this is such a higher level of intelligence because it's actually using your brain to find food in a more scavenging way, a bit like a crow or even a parrot. Very clever bird of prey. Very unusual, very highly strung and very unique to us here at Banham Zoo. I hope you have enjoyed seeing her, ladies and gentlemen. She's wonderful. That's PJ, our African Harrier Hawk. Have you enjoyed that? Jolly good, jolly good. We want to speed things up for you for the last bit of, of the show. And we've got uh, Emily coming in here. And she's got with us uh, a slightly faster bird of prey. This is our falcon. Yeah, falcons are built for speed. And uh, this is Quinn. She's wearing a hood at the moment, so she can't see any of you scary people. Uh, but we'll take the hood off so that you can see her fly. Thanks very much. Now, to fly her, we're going to do something slightly differently. Uh, to fly her, we're going to do something slightly differently. We're going to um, use a lure. And now the lure is actually a bit of rubber on the end of a string. And I'm going to swing it around, and we're going to see if Quinn can catch it, all right? And it just gives you an idea of how these birds might catch their prey in the wild, all right? And what we, uh, what we probably need is our sunglasses for this because she's got a habit of going up into the sun and trying to blind me. And if there's pigeons around, that could be fun as well. Because this is definitely a bird that hunts for other birds. In this country, we've got falcons. In fact, we have the fastest living thing on the planet living in this country, the peregrine falcon. And peregrine falcons are found all over the world, including Norwich. We've got them on the, on the uh, cathedral, you know. And um, these lugger falcons, they're actually found in India. All right, they're found uh, in India. They hunt for lizards and small birds, and they are very, very, very agile. Her wings are sharp, knife-shaped, and she'll fly today by going behind you, and I want you to try to keep your eyes on her at all times, because one of her favorite things is to ambush me from behind, all right? So uh, stick these on. If you've got sunglasses, stick them on because she may just come at you out of the sun today. Now, straight away, you can see there's a different shape in the air. She is built for speed. She's got long, knife-shaped wings that cut through the air. And as she cuts in, she's trying to catch this prey. Now, in the wild, prey doesn't just sit there to be caught. So what I do with the lure is I move it out of the way so that the falcon has to come back for a second attack. Now she's gone behind you. She's using that tree. Which side is she going to come in from? Over the top of the tree, down! Pushing out that way. She's going to use another ambush technique. 
Oh, over the top. Banking around, using the sun now to blind me. In she comes, folding those wings in. Each attack, she becomes more and more tired. Each attack, the prey becomes more and more tired. And in the wild, it's survival of the fittest. In the wild, she chooses old, weak and sick individuals to give herself a chance, and that's why I'm doing it today. Let's keep it real, folks. She's really working quite hard. She's gone out behind the tree there. Sometimes she goes out and sits on the giraffe house, which is probably what she's done. Oh, here she is. Just behind you there. And uh, she quite likes it when it's windy. And she quite likes when it's really windy, because then she comes at me with the wind behind her, which is really quite a good technique. I've just lost sight of her for a second, ladies and gentlemen. But that's fine, there's a swallow. <laughs> and Quinn's only in her second year of flying. Here she comes. She's only in her second year of flying. Um, so she's doing very, very well. We're just getting her back into the saddle this year. And uh, we'll fly her again at 2.30. Um, but she is the last bird that we have in this morning's Bird of Prey display. We hope you've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed it? And it's going to be a great day here at the zoo, so please have a great day with us. And uh, we hope you'll come back and see us at 2.30, but if not, please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.